Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking to you about my suggestions for a budget beginner but pro level setup that you can use to right out of the gate start making really cool images but also learn, grow, and start making images that you're going to be really proud of into the future, even start making some money doing professional work with this setup. And I plan to be doing videos like this at different budgets, different styles of photography and videography. So if that's something you're interested in, click the subscribe button so you can get notified of those videos as they come out. All of the gear I talk about in this video, I will link with affiliate links in the description down below. If you're interested in buying any of it, you can use those links at no extra cost to you. It'll help support this channel so that I can continue making content for you guys. But let's get in and look at the setup that I've suggested for you. So my suggestion for the camera in this setup is the original Canon 7D, which yes, is an older camera, but at the time when it came out, it was Canon's flagship APS-C camera. And I suggest looking for it used. When I was looking up prices for this video, I was seeing it going used in very good condition for $239, which is crazy for what you get. First of all, like I said, it was Canon's APS-C flagship camera, which means you're gonna get, among other things, a professional body. So it's gonna feel good when you're carrying it around, when you're shooting all day. It's gonna have a good level of controls on it. And it's also gonna look professional. A few basic things about why I think this camera is a great deal for the price. It has an 18 megapixel camera, which is plenty resolution. Even if it's not as much as most modern cameras, it's still plenty to print even up to large size images. You have 19 cross type autofocus points. Now 19, again, isn't a ton, but they are spread out really well over the viewfinder. And they're all cross type, which means they all work really, really well. It can shoot photos up to eight frames per second continuously, which is even fast enough to start shooting sports or wildlife if that's something you're looking to go into. Now, I won't say that this camera is better than modern cameras, but for the price that you will get this camera for, it does everything that you would need to do relatively well. You can start making money on it on pretty much any type of photography that you would like to get into. And then once you are making money with this camera, you can save up and focus on what you need in your next camera and put that money toward that rather than trying to figure out exactly the right camera right off the bat. If you want a deeper, more in-depth look, I did do a review of the Canon 7D and I'll leave a link to that video right here. All right, so now the lenses that I would suggest at this price point, I'm gonna suggest two and both of them are prime lenses. What a prime lens means is that it doesn't zoom in or out. So if you wanna zoom closer or further away from your subject, you have to move closer or further away from the subject. And there's a couple reasons why I suggest primes versus zoom starting out. First is that with a prime, you're forced to learn composition a little better. You have to move around and moving around typically gets you to be a little bit more creative because as you're moving around, you're seeing that, oh, well actually this might look better from this angle. This angle isn't necessarily so flattering for the subject and you're trying new and creative ways and just getting better at photography in general. Another reason is the value that you tend to get with a prime lens in comparison with a zoom lens, especially at this budget level. A zoom lens is going to be able to zoom in and out, yes, but a prime lens is optimized for exactly that focal length. So no, you can't zoom in, you can't zoom out, but what you have, the lens is optimized for exactly that. In this budget range, zoom lenses, they're not optimized for anything really. They're mostly just to be a little more versatile. Another advantage is the maximum aperture that you can get with prime lenses versus zoom lenses. Aperture is what opens up to allow light through a lens, and the wider that you can open that, the more light you can allow through. So for instance, taking photos indoors or in any dark environment, a wider aperture is gonna allow you to get better image quality in these situations, and a wider aperture also allows you to have a shallower depth of field, which causes you to be able to get blurrier backgrounds, which is an aesthetic that a lot of people like. The first lens I'm gonna recommend is the Canon 50 millimeter f1.8. The crazy thing about this lens is the price is $99. I did a more in-depth review about this lens if you're interested in checking it out, but the focal length of 50 millimeters on a crop sensor camera like the Canon 7D is going to give you the effective view of about an 85 millimeter lens, which is a very standard go-to for portraits. 
The next lens that I'm going to recommend is the 24 millimeter f 2.8 EFS lens from Canon. And this is a wider aperture lens. And on this camera, it's going to give you about the effective field of view of 35 millimeters. Now, if you don't really know what I'm talking about with effective field of view and focal length, don't worry about it too much right now. Basically with the 50 millimeter lens, you're gonna get a more zoomed in look. That's gonna be great for portraits, for getting a blurrier background. And because of the F1.8 aperture, it's also gonna be better for shooting in lower light. The 24 millimeter lens is going to give you a medium wide field of view. That's gonna be a little bit more versatile. It's gonna be a great walk around lens and you're still gonna be able to get good low light and shallow depth of field with that F2.8 aperture. As far as memory goes, the Canon 7D uses a CF card. CF is an older type of memory card, although some photographers still use it today. What I'm gonna suggest is a 16 gigabit CF card and a CF card reader. 16 gigs, that's going to still give you hundreds of photos, plenty for starting out, and then if you get to the point where you need more, you can always buy more memory cards. All right, so that's my suggestion for an under $500 camera setup. All of the gear that I mentioned here, I think is a great place to start learning and taking awesome photos. Also keep in mind, you might be able to find this stuff used or refurbished at an even lower price and save even more money. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. In the comments below, tell me what kind of photography you're thinking about getting into, what kind of camera gear you have or have used before, what you're looking for. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button. See you guys.